Being loyal to one cruise line is often touted as a great way to save money and even to get extra perks, and that definitely can be true. However, there are some downsides, and one of them is probably not what you think. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeworldcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, you know how it goes. You book a cruise, you absolutely love it, you book more cruises, and then before you know it, you are loyal to one cruise line. That can be all well and good. However, sometimes people do wonder, is it worth it to be loyal to one cruise line? Am I maybe missing out? So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five reasons you may not want to be loyal to one cruise line. And one reason is probably not exactly something that you would think. It's not something that I've heard talked about before and I did wanna share that with you. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one reason to not be loyal to one cruise line is that you want flexibility. And this one is two parts. You want flexibility in price and you want flexibility in itinerary as well. Now, when it comes to price at any given time that you want to cruise, you will probably find between five and maybe 20 or more cruises that are all leaving around the same time, even for the same itinerary that you want to book on. And the price ranges are really going to vary. If you stay with the same one cruise line, you really are limiting yourself. You won't be eligible for some of the different promotions, some of the different offers, and really just sometimes the lower price that another similar cruise line has. And when it comes to itinerary, perhaps this might even be more important than money in some cases. The fact is that not every cruise line goes to every destination. There are some cruise lines that offer more itineraries or different destinations, maybe somewhere that you haven't gone yet that you really do wanna go. And when you only cruise with one line, sometimes you do limit yourself and you do wanna explore other options. Now, please let me know, even if you are loyal to one cruise line, if the fact that you really wanna to go to a certain destination or do a certain itinerary, if that's kind of enticed you a little bit to try another cruise line. Number two, that you wanna try out a new cruise ship or even a new cruise ship experience. Now this definitely can happen. Different cruise lines will come out with different cruise ships and sometimes there is a cruise ship that just really looks interesting to you. It has maybe a very different concept and you wanna give that a try or even on the cruise ship, maybe there are different experiences that you do wanna have a chance to discover. Now something that a lot of people do say is sometimes they are cruising with the same cruise line and then they say they find that some of the shows tend to repeat or even they get a little bit bored with some of the entertainment and sometimes just switching that up, trying out a new cruise ship from a different cruise line can give you a bit of a different perspective and can be an enjoyable change. Number three, now this one can be disappointing to a lot of people. Sometimes when you reach those higher loyalty levels, you realize those loyalty perks weren't as good as you thought. And especially at those top tier levels, a lot of people say that they really work up to those top tier levels. And sometimes what they see is by the time they finally get to those top tier levels, the loyalty benefits actually change and then they are very, very disappointed. But even at the lower level, sometimes we have to consider what is really the value of those loyalty perks. Are you going to that welcome back party? Are you really getting value from that? That's often at the lower levels, at least something that does come with the loyalty perks. Sometimes you'll have a discount in some of the shops of about five to 10%. How much do you really shop at in the shops? Is it really of value to you? and stateroom category upgrades. Something that I've noticed, not that I don't appreciate having the upgrades, but oftentimes when I'm receiving a stateroom category upgrade, I am saving between 20 and maybe 30 to $40 per passenger. So it really isn't absolutely worth it to have that upgrade. I'm not saying that I don't want it, so I don't want any cruise lines to take it away, but sometimes we do need to evaluate the value of those perks. Now, I am very curious if you've reached those top tier levels or you're getting close to it, do you get disappointed when the cruise lines actually change some of those top tier level benefits? Number four, and I think this is a really big one. Sometimes we get stuck with a cruise line that doesn't meet our needs or our vacation preferences anymore. And really, this is nobody's fault. The reality is you may have started off with a cruise line 10 or 20 years ago, and you've changed a lot in those five, 10 or 20 years, and the cruise line has changed too. And sometimes people get a little bit upset with the cruise line. They say, why aren't they 
offering all of the different things that they offered before that I really loved. So as sad as it is, it sometimes is time to move on and to try something else to see if another cruise line might just be a better fit for our needs and our vacation preferences right now. Number five. Now, after all that I've said so far, this one might really surprise you but it is that the grass is not always greener. Now, what I mean is it's a good idea sometimes to try out a new cruise line, try out a new cruise ship, have a bit of a different experience. And something that you may find when you try something new is that you miss some of the things that you actually took for granted on the other cruise line. Like maybe you try a new cruise line and you do find that the service in the main dining room is a little bit better, but you miss all of those casual dining and food options that you really liked. Or maybe you try a new cruise line and you miss the fact that the cruise director was always involved and it was so much fun and you miss all of those shows and that energy. Or you try a new cruise line and that new cruise line doesn't give you free laundry and you realize you loved free laundry as a perk. So while trying a new cruise line or a new cruise ship can still be a really good experience, the fact that you tried something else may make you realize that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And it can actually make you kind of fall in love with the cruise line that you always really liked and sort of felt out of love with. You could fall in love again. It's kind of like that expression, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Take a little break, take a step away, but when you go back, you'll probably find that you appreciate it so much because of the time that you did spend away. Now, if you are getting ready for a cruise, I'm gonna leave a video right after this one all about travel gadgets that are just amazing for cruisers. So I will leave that for you to watch next in case you are interested, but I'd really love to hear from you. Are you loyal to the same cruise line? Do you like to switch and try up different cruise lines? Why do you think it's best to either stay loyal to a cruise line or not to stay loyal to a cruise line? Please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I would love to have you here within the Life While Cruise community. Bye for now and happy cruising.